Hey, it's Joel Walsman, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. In the words of the great Ernest Shackleton, men wanted for hazardous journey, small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, and constant danger. Chance of return? Doubtful. Honor and recognition? Only in the event of success. No, seriously, if you're drawn to this video and the grueling endeavor that these men undertake today, then please reach out to Jefferson Electric in the link because we're hiring men and women like you. And join us as we bust our knuckles. Here it goes. I'm Tim Shackleton, ePro apprentice and project manager. We're here at Christ Missionary Baptist Church established in 1919, but relocated to this building in 1955. They've got a three-phase commercial service, as most churches do, and they need a service upgrade. There is a massive 100-foot-long run across the attic space of the church to their main two-panel setup that we need to figure out. We need to limit the number of bends going to our meter base and the other existing equipment. So we're setting all those things up. This is the front of the building. All the service equipment's in the back though, so come along. The sanctuary space is beautiful, and that's because they've hidden all of the electricals and HVAC up in the attic. So we've got to go up one more level here to see where these main panels are being fed. At the top of the ladder, this is your view. Look at the scale. Got a giant pull box here, and then a hundred feet of two and a half inch EMT, spanning the entire attic space above the sanctuary that we just looked through. At the end of that, we've got some bonus, uh, some bonus bends we should probably point out too. As you follow this long run, we take a quick 90 and then another quick 90 to continue out the back wall of the church where our service location is. And those 180 degrees of bends plus the LB after the pull box, taking us to 270 degrees of bends, are going to be an absolute nightmare for the 350 KC mill aluminum that we have to pull through. After our two turns, we finally reach the south-facing brick wall, which has already been cored through, and we're making up junctions in that box, which we'll take you to right now. Here at the end of the line, this is the exterior on the south side. We're in the back alley, and that is the pull box where we are gonna be running our main feeder wires. Phil and Porf are up on the roof, straightening out that cable to try to simplify the pull and taping up those ends like crazy so we don't lose them all the way through or part way through at any point. So those two and a half inch conduits are needed because we've got this 350 KC mill wire running through. We've got three current carrying conductors for the three phase system. And then we've also got a ground to run. So we need all of that cross-sectional area. And yeah, we're excited for the tugger to help us out here in a moment. The rope you see coming out of the conduit up in that pull box is the same one next to the tugger running all the way through the conduit line. We're gonna run two runs, one for each panel inside, and this is gonna be the first one here. Hopefully we're gonna be seeing that move soon. The guys have got the sock into the conduit. That's the portion at the top that helps to bundle and connect the wires to the rope that the tugger's actually pulling on. After that, now they've paused again in order to get some wire lube on the wires themselves without it soaking into the sock just because it's a mess and that way all the rest of this wire should have as minimal resistance as possible. The guys are now undoing their wire head. They're hoping they've pulled enough, and I think they have, to terminate into these panels. And so now it's just a matter of getting things out of the way, freeing up the wire. Now that we have the first run, we're walking the rope back to the guys outside. They are gonna start feeding it through and we are opening up this 90 so that we can run our fish tape through there because our fish tape is not long enough to do this whole thing. Porf always has the best ideas on the job site and this best idea was to use the tugger to pull the wire 
up and over the pull box because it couldn't actually pull through. But that way we got full length all the way down to the panel. So now what we're doing is refeeding by hand the wires to these LBs and then down to our panel. But we know we've got the wire length and we didn't have to do all that exclusively by hand. We got the length first and now we can work with that a lot easier. So for you apprentices out there, the problem we're solving here is uh, bend radius. If we actually travel with the wire through this conduit, then we have to turn in a direct immediate 90 in order to travel down this LB. However, when we pull up and bypass this conduit, it allows the wire path to actually be up into a loop so that this path and the angle into, down into our panel is significantly easier. We don't want to drag against this corner. We'll rip the jacket of the wire this way. We can do that with a little more grace. If you're watching this video in central Indiana, I just want to point out real quick that we are a multi-trade company. That's right. Jefferson Electric and B&W are the same organization. Plumbing, heating, cooling, drains, electrical, and solar. This is one team and one family. Check the description. We'd love to serve you. We're headed back up to this uh, shorter roof in order to get this pole ready to go. Pole number two. Here we go, Porf. Phil, do you have any feedback for me? Anything I could be doing better right now? Keep doing what you're doing, buddy. Hey, we, we caught it. Was it even po humanly possible without a tugger? Or is it just... I don't think so. No, yeah. Well, I think that tugger cost us about 8,500 bucks. It might be a bit on the high end. About $365 a day to rent them with a rope. But a lot of places you can't rent them. They're just not that common. Yeah. And so a tugger like that, that's got more adaptability with the, the tripod and the stand, that's... We determined that was the, the right way to go. We probably don't even use it once a month, but when you gotta have it, you gotta have it. This is our currently existing equipment. This is the CTE cabinet that the utility uses to actually monitor and meter the electrical draw. And here is the still functioning electrical panel. Ours is not replacing it, just going alongside it right here. What if we split the difference and didn't bring it down all the way? We could raise it up a little bit, honor that six foot seven off of this measurement, not this one, because it's more relevant. So we have enough room to come in. We would have to space the conduit out. It'd still be in that, still worth removing the gutter, because, but we're only counting, we're only pulling it out three inches total. So you'd have to have a spacer between the mini and the brick in order to secure the vertical pipes. But, I don't think in good conscience we can put this on top of the pipe and have a main disconnect that's like, you so it know, won't it won't be it won't out. Be at your face here's, here's the, right the fade out. Okay, so. Because it doesn't sit. The top, breaker's in the right. middle. In the middle. Okay. You know what I mean? I don't, yeah, I'm good at that. I don't care how high the cabinet is itself. Right, you just yeah. care. That's what I yeah. was talking about. I was like, if we See, find we out will... how much this comes up. Yeah. Then we can beat it, beat the system like that. Uh huh. Because it doesn't say the top of the cabinet, right? Okay. It's, it's I think I missed that. Part. So you're saying you can put it to the brick, mm -hmm. and the yeah, highest over current the, device I, is six, I can seven, show or you less. The guts in the brick. Yeah, okay. Can you take a measurement of no, the cabinet. No, I trust you guys. That's it. That's it. Perfect. The other disconnects won't matter, right? Good. I want to get out the tires. Okay, so the. That's the highest disconnect. Yeah, the highest one in the on position has to be six, seven to the middle of the handle or less. Okay. That's our constraint. Hey guys, I'm sorry. I missed most of the job today. I was on with the business mastermind group. That's right. We have a community of guys who own businesses and do jobs just like this. See, one of the questions that arises is, do I rent a tugger, $365 a day? Do I buy a tugger for 8,500 bucks? How are these decisions made? What are my job descriptions, my profit percentage, breakdown, departments? All of these questions we can answer for you. In fact, we have a free community where these resources are entirely free to people starting electrical contracting businesses. Check the description, click on the link, 
It's a step-by-step, -step, video based process. I'd love to see you there. In addition, subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.